What's up you guys, Jared Hoffman here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Trek Fuel EXE, this new lightweight e-mountain bike from Trek. We're gonna start by giving you guys a brief overview of exactly what this bike is. And then we're gonna take a deep dive into the components that come spec'd on this specific model right here. Because I think this model is the best bang for your buck, Fuel EXE. They got everything from the 9.5 all the way up to the 9.9. .9. And I think this is the sweet spot right here. So let's go ahead, talk about the Trek Fuel EXE, exactly what it is. And then after we take that deep dive on the components, I'll show you guys the weight of this bike when I threw on the scales at the bike shop. So the Trek Fuel EXE, for any of you guys that don't know, is a new lightweight e-mountain bike from Trek at this fully integrated display right here which i think is really cool every single model comes with the same carbon frame same integrated display in the top tube the same exact bar lever remote right here you can see the lowest power middle power highest power all that power coming out of a super sleek small tq hrp 50 motor with the battery integrated into this down tube right there. If you didn't know any better, you might be fooled and think this was just a regular mountain bike on the trail. It's super quiet. I've been riding this thing around. Doesn't quite give you the full power of a full size e-mountain bike, but definitely enough power to double the amount of laps you can get in in a day. So for any of you that are like myself, coming off your regular mountain bike, riding an e-bike for the first time, this could be your gateway into e-mountain bikes. This could be that Goldilocks bike that kind of does it all, gives you that extra assistance, lets you get those extra laps in, doesn't add quite as much weight, but let's go ahead and get into this specific model right here, which is the Fuel EXE 9.7. And I'm gonna tell you guys why I think this is the best bang for your buck model that they have. So most Trek lineups, they're numbered like five, seven, eight, and then it goes up to the 9.7, 9.8, and 9.9. .9. And usually the eights, whether you're talking about the Roscoe eight, the Fuel EX8, the Slash 8. Usually the 8 model is kind of like the best bang for your buck model. But these Fuel EXEs are numbered a little bit different. They're all carbon, so they're all 9 point models. So they got the very base model that's the 9.5. They got this model that's the 9.7. And then they got the 9.8 XT and then the 9.9s. Now let's just start real quick with the 9.5. If you guys wanna know more about all the specific models, I made a video, I'll throw a link up top about that. But the 9.5 base models usually come with really low spec components, components that I wouldn't really want on my bike. When you get above this 9.7, you're starting to get into really more expensive, kind of like premium components that may be good but you don't really need however this 9.7 let's go ahead we'll just go front to back go over these components i have a lot of experience riding the components that come on this bike because i have a trek slash 9.7 that came spec'd pretty much the same and i've been really happy with that so let's just start at the front right here the fox rhythm 36 fork so this bike is a 140 millimeter travel in the rear, 150 up front. So 150 mil travel, Fox 36 fork. That's really in the sweet spot for the Fox 36. This is a grip damper. So this is the rhythm fork. So it does come with a grip damper. So that is something you could upgrade on this fork, but a very good fork. And definitely for this price range is definitely a good fork for this bike. Now let's move on to the bars right here. We'll take a look at the brakes. So SLX brakes, once again, a lot of people, if they're gonna get Shimano, they may look for something like an XT, but I've been riding these SLX brakes on my Trek Slash, and I've had no issues with these brakes. In fact, I wouldn't even say that you need to waste your money on the XT brakes. These SLX brakes are great. It's got the 203 rotor up front and in the back, 
it's got, oh yeah, this thing comes with a 203 rotor front and back. So that's pretty cool too. On my Slash, it comes with a 180 rotor in the rear and a 203 rotor up front. So the Fuel EXE has got a 203 rotor front and back. So you're not even gonna need to upgrade those brakes. Definitely good brakes on this bike. Have no issues with that. Now there are some things like the grips and the saddle that you probably are gonna have to change out if you get this, but you're gonna have to change that out with any bike. So let's move on from the fork. We talked about the brakes. Now we'll go ahead and move on down the bike right here. Like I said, these all come in the carbon frame, integrated display with the same exact uh, remote, bar mounted remote right here. So you don't have to worry about that between different models, but the rear shock. Another thing that makes this a best bang for the buck model, this rear shock, I have the same exact Fox Float X shock on my Trek Slash in a 160 mil travel. No issues with that shock. I've been bombing that thing down Black Diamond Trails. I've been loving the way that shock performs. Even though it doesn't have the compression adjustment knob up here, it's got the kind of stock tune from Trek. I've never felt the need to adjust any compression. Love the way this shock feels on my slash and so far riding the Fuel EXE. Love the way this shock feels. Now moving on to the drivetrain. These E13 crank arms. Let's go ahead and see something real quick. These are in a 165 mil length, so that's good. Not too long, so you're not gonna have to worry about those pedal strikes quite as much. So no need to change out those crank arms, good crank arms, the drivetrain. It's got the kind of SLX XT mix. So it's got the SLX cassette, SLX shifter right here, and the XT derailleur. I got this same exact setup on my Trek Slash and it performs really good. I've had no issues with it. Been riding that bike for almost a year. Haven't had to change anything out. Loving the way that performs. This thing has also got the line comp wheels. So it does have alloy wheels. Some of you might want to go up from here to the 9.8 because you think you want carbon wheels, but you don't really need them. I've had these alloy wheels on my Trek Slash. I do have tire inserts in mine, so I have Kush Core in those, but bombing it down some super gnarly, rocky terrain. You can see the type of rocks and rocky terrain we have here in Klamath Falls have had no issues with those wheels. The dropper, one of the other things on this specific model, it comes with that Trans X dropper. So that isn't the Line Elite dropper. It's not the higher end dropper. However, I have the Trans X dropper on my Trek Slash, have no issues with it. The only thing on this model that you don't get on the higher end model in the 9.8 is the 9.7 only comes with the 170 mil dropper. And you can see how taller guys like me have to have that dropper out quite a bit. If you get the 9.8, which is one model up from this, then you get the 200 mil dropper. So that's kind of cool, but that's really the only thing that would make me want to get the 9.8 over this 9.7. Now let's go ahead and talk about the weight of this bike. Getting a little bit out of why this is the best bang for the buck and a little bit more into how this bike rides. I've been so happy with how this bike rides. My slash I have, I have my slash, I've been riding that. That my slash is about uh, 36 pounds, just a little over 36. I tried doing a Trek slash versus Trek rail. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll throw a link up top. The rail is up in the 50 pound range and the Trek rail being that full size e-bike 50 pound range, it's really hard to whip it over jumps and to jump on it. However, this bike right here, this is a size extra large. And when I threw this thing on the scale, it was 42 pounds, 10 ounces. So, you know, only like six pounds more than my Trek Slash, and when I'm jumping this thing and when I'm bombing down trails, I really don't feel much of a difference. I've been loving the way this thing feels. I love that 140, 150 um, fork right there. I think if I had this bike, I might uh, increase the travel on that to 160. I really think this is in that all mountain bike range, the one bike that can handle it all. And with that TQ motor right there, and the battery and the drive system, it's gonna get you up that many more laps. So there you guys go, the Trek Fuel EXE 
9.7, best bang for your buck. Go ahead, smash that like, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment below, let me know which model you guys would choose, but mostly get stoked, go ride, and have some fun, people.